All right, this is Michael Lavieri, and uh, this is his 32 inch F2.84. Mikey, what is the name of this telescope? Yeah, the name is Cosmo, and uh, it's been a long time coming. It's been over 10 years. Tonight is the first night that we're really going to give it a serious test. And uh, we tried it about three months ago, but the weather wasn't uh, conducive. So tonight, uh, we're going to give it a good run. Lots of things to check out. Uh, how the collimation works, how well the optics are, how smoothly it works. Hey, there's a lot of things to test tonight, so uh, I think it will be very fruitful. We're going to have a good time. All right, so uh, speaking of collimation, let's go ahead and start with this stuff right there. Why don't you tell us yeah. about that? Well, one of the problems is, especially if you're alone collimating a big telescope like this, is about impossible. So I uh, came up with the idea, Jeff and I were talking about it, and he mentioned it, and that is to put servo motors on the collimation uh, bolts that uh, take care of the mirror collimation. So those are down at the bottom. Let's end take here. a look at those while well, we're talking. Here there are motors with gears. You can see there's one there, and there's another one down there, and another one there. And the uh, idea is, is to control everything right by the eyepiece, is, which is where you want to collimate it. So we just tried it about 20 minutes ago, and can't believe it, it works. Yeah, there's no back and forth thing, and there's no two-man thing. You just collimate it right on the spot there. And so as uh, the night goes by, you need to do fine tunings, especially on a fast telescope. This 2.8, it probably will need to be collimated several times during the night. I yep, guess. several times. So, so this makes it easy. So since we're on this back end here, why don't we uh, discuss uh, the cell, the fans, why the back of the mirror is polished, all sure. that stuff. Okay. So the back of the mirror is polished so that it will slide over the plastic supports that hold it. The idea being is as you move the mirror, the, the mirror, as you move the telescope, the mirror should slide in the position rather than be stuck. When it gets stuck, there's pressure on the mirror, and then what you get is astigmatism. So as long as it's slippery, everything is good. And so we, we actually did that experiment. We had uh, a 27-point cell. It was a creaky-style cell. We uh, polished the back of the mirror and we went with this 18 point JP Astrocraft type and that cleaned it up far, far superior to the other design. So the other thing on here is that the structure holding the mirror is totally separated from the structure holding it to the scope. No more collimating it by the uh, unions on the uh, trep or the uh, whiffles. And, and this thing here, you, you loosen, there's four bolts, you loosen this up, it's on a hinge, the whole thing comes down the mirror, and you can slide it out. And this way, you can take the mirror out that way, you can clean it. Uh, you don't have to put the mirror through the top, which is really, really difficult to do. And it's such a tight fit. I had to make an A-frame, uh, that took up half the garage, my wife wasn't real happy about that. Uh, it barely fit in there, every time you put it down, there was a possibility of breaking the mirror. This mm -hmm. way, it's pretty fail-safe for two people. One person, it's a little difficult because the mirror is so heavy. But with two, it's just really simple. You just go. Well, we noticed there's four fans, and we're just getting, uh, it's early in the night, it's not dark yet. you got four fans running, but why don't we pull the shroud up and look at the front side so you can explain the, uh, the other fan over there. Okay, so we're going to undress the uh, telescope here. And as you look in there, you will see it's suspended as a fan that rotate, uh, rotating right now. The video's pretty dark. I'm going to try it from over here. All righty. So the concept of this fan is, at first, is to cool the front surface of the mirror while the back surface is cooling. That's supposed to facilitate the cooling very uh, tremendously. And now, the surface boundary uh, cooling. And then as once we're ready to observe and hopefully everything is fairly cooled down, then I'm going to slow it down tremendously to where it's only turning maybe three, four hundred RPM, just enough to barely circulate the air and break up the the surface um, air that is is um, heated, uh, which is causing just slight turbulence. So that's supposed to break that up. We have no idea how well it's going to work. And while we're on here, I'm going to point it. I don't. This is probably too dark. I wonder if I can adjust my. Uh, there we go. There's my brightness. Uh, these are the two whiffles that are on the front, one over there and one over here, which are contacting the uh, center of gravity of the mirror. So I thought I'd point that out too. Now, um, when you collimate the telescope, initially it's nice to see the center of the mirror. So is it something that we can uh, uh, show? Um, What's that now, Jeff? Oh, well, is it, can you show that 
switching oh, out of the way. Mirror, sure. So uh, this, it's in the way of uh, the laser collimation. Uh, let's see here. I can't see it from here, but there's a little little guy right here, I think. Yeah, there we go. And that opens up. So that allows the beam to go through the center. Yeah, so now from the front end, you can see that there's a path to uh, use your laser collimator. Of course, after the laser collimator, we always do uh, a Cheshire system, and then we do star testing, because that F2.84 collimation is critical. So it always has to be done by star testing. And these wires here can go right and left so that we can get as close as we can to making these match the veins up there. It's not mm -hmm. perfect yet. We have to work on it. Mm -hmm. But two of them are quite close, and the other two need a little bit of tweaking. So the we'll get that. collimation is so critical that we do it frequently. So that's why we uh, we put on this. Mike, that's why Mike put on this um, front end adjusting collimation system. All right. So um, I'm going to go to your secondary mirror. Um, secondary mirror on this is is it a seven? It's a seven inch. It's a seven inch minor axis. But at 32 inch f2.8 with a SIPS, we had to uh, recess the, let me get a little brighter here. We had to recess the focuser quite a bit to get this thing filled in. So we're in the process of finishing up an eight and a quarter inch secondary mirror. Once we do that, we can pull the focuser back out from being in the optical path and shorten the, tube, uh, the tube. So. Uh, that's an update coming soon is the uh, um, eight and a quarter inch secondary mirror. Oh, one thing I can show too is the transport yeah. thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me get it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it running here. So he has a battery on here that he uses for his transport. And this scope, how much does the scope weigh, Mike? What's that? How much does your scope weigh? Uh, the whole scope probably 400 pounds. I've never weighed it, but the components add up to about yeah, that. So it's got to go in and out of that so. ramp. And so he puts this dude on and is able to move Using this telescope. Using handlebar, uh, handlebars work, and, and I have those as a fail safe in case the motor uh, should happen to not work. But this thing just attaches right here. You can raise it or lower it. You have a switch here forwards backwards it's not very fast kind of winds a little bit but it's so much better on the back it, it is you know Definitely better than you're, you're like 114 years 115 years old so it feels like it when you, you, re read it. <laughs> you really need to have whatever you can i mean that Even makes this a, young, a strong young person it, this, it's just not fun. you have to have an easy system when you have a scope this size and so that's something that that has helped a lot. Now, as a backup, in case that thing craps out, he's got these pipes on the side. And we bring handles with us so that if... About eight foot handles. Yeah. And you can pick it up. I could do it. I'd be sore for about two weeks. Chris is young and strong and an ex-Marine. He'll probably be able to do that with no effort whatsoever. So, but this is much better. Even an eight-year-old could do this. So, any effort. he has, of course, a SIPS system because, uh, at f2.8 your coma is outstanding so he has a sips system um he's got on this end he's got these pole things that he's got wrapped around each of that so it just settles in in the right spot somewhere along the way he'll probably slice these off and make it a little dressier he's got these pins here so that when we're traveling down the road he can lock the rocker box with the mirror box and they that way they won't go flying these when we hit a good bump these little guys here will be shifted up and that will allow us to use a bino viewer on it. I oh, have a bino yeah. viewer that I want to use, so it will be indexed correctly without any effort. You just open this up, put it in there, it's done. Oh, we got to get a shot of this awesome shroud that his wife put together. Got all these galaxies on it. It, it loops down here. So, uh, let's see, Mikey. Oh, yeah. Why don't you tell us about your, uh, your input on your foot down here? Oh. Well, you need to get power to the scope. I mean, it's got fans, it's going to have a dew heater, and it has the collimating motor, so you need quite a bit of power. And ideally, it, I don't want any lead-acid batteries anywhere near the mirror, plus they're heavy. So what I did was uh, I put a receptacle there. Over here, there's a battery box. I mean, it looks like a little milk-carrying pail. And uh, there's a 24-volt system. has two uh, two batteries there. We're working at... Uh, uh, 44 amp hours 
and it supplies all the power we'll need for oh probably three four observing nights so, so eventually he'll have his canvas tarp with a hole in it and that will be not a trip point so at uh, one point i want to make is how stubby this telescope looks at f 2.8 uh, originally, Mike, what was the focal ratio of this telescope? Yeah, we, we went for a 3.6, which was the current thinking at the time. Just about every commercial telescope was that. And uh, what happened was we set it up in the backyard of my house. And I think I maybe was the first to react, but I think Jeff agreed. I don't want to go up and down the ladder all night long. And that was about four or five steps mm -hmm. for me and probably three or four for Jeff. He's a little taller than I am. And uh, we decided that a sub 3.0 was the way to go. And that's the best thing we could have ever done. It just makes using the scope a pleasure. Well, I have to admit, I, I'm the reason it's 2.8, and I'm sorry, Mikey. Yeah. He said, let's make it F3. So I made it F3, and I missed, and I got 2.84, and he said, okay. Well, we did that before we realized we're going to have a secondary mirror problem here. So it's my fault, but I'm going to make him a... Chris over here got him a big flat piece of glass. I took it to the water jet guy. We made it an eight and a quarter inch second air mirror. And quartz too. And now we have to get on my continuous lapping machine and just make it square, uh, make it flat. And when we do that, we'll put that on the telescope and we'll be able to pull the poles back and move the focuser out. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and walk around here. Can you think of anything else, Mike, about your well, telescope? what I'm going to say is, is that this is the beginning of probably a lot more big scopes in the club. So between Chris, it's a 34 you're work, going to be working on? 33. Jeff has a 31 and a half, a 0.8 meter. This one's a 0.82 meter, I think. Just slightly half inch bigger. We can't tell the difference, really. And so um, there might be even bigger ones down the road. Jeff is contemplating a, a much larger telescope and I wouldn't put it past him to be doing it in the next couple of years. Well, it, we don't know. Right now we've got the 33 and the 31 and a half to hammer out, and those are big projects, so um, can't even look beyond them actually right at the moment. Tonight, I just want to have fun. Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. Um, well, there's a point where the scope becomes so overwhelming that it pisses all the fun out. So there's a fine line between let's have a big scope that could draw in these incredibly faint galaxies and make the standard items look awesome. And then you cross that line and all of a sudden it's like I can't physically handle the size of a telescope. Yeah. And um, the other thing is large telescopes are a young guys and girls game. When you get a scope that's 400 or more pounds and you're 70, what are you, 109 now, 110? 111. Yeah, 111. So, yeah, it becomes a problem. And um, Mel Bartels has the really cool logic where uh, let's make something that's f2.8, that's got a meniscus mirror, and I could pick it up with one hand and walk out the door with it. And so um, anything bigger than this meniscus mirror is probably kind of the ticket. Fast, focal ratio, large aperture, meniscus mirror. You want a short ladder to be able to look at Yeah, this. nobody wants that orchard ladder in the dark. Well, Mikey, uh, thank you for uh, doing your show and tell here. Is there anything else that we've missed on this? Well, what's this dude right here? Is this how you just get power up to the top end? Yeah, the, the power goes from inside, comes okay. to here, and then this has a number of wires in here since it's not... Uh, not remote controlled, it's not wireless, but it just goes up there and it controls it. There's eight wires in here to, to get all of those uh, uh, connections set up. So my understanding is your next upgrade is going to be encoders and a sidereal tech drive yes, system. absolutely. Okay, so right at the moment this is not driving, but uh, next time we do one of these videos, maybe this guy will yeah, be uh, go-to. I am sidereal tech. <clears throat> I spoke to the owner and he said that um, they're going to be putting really nice clutches on the different drives, which is really nice because then you can drive it with the motors, but you don't have to necessarily use that to make it go where you want to. You yeah. can just go ahead and grab it and move it. Mm -hmm. And that makes, again, we're trying to make things simple, brainless, where you just do things and it's intuitive. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about doing things that's going to destroy or break things. Well, one other update that's going to happen is up at the upper tube assembly, you're going to put another extension of uh, some dark shrouding on there. Absolutely, that mm -hmm. hopefully will improve the contrast and uh, I think make, um, picking up the fainter objects even more. Mm -hmm. So tonight, if it, if it clears up, uh, we should have a pretty good... It's looking good tonight.
All right. Well, thank you very much, Mikey. My pleasure. Thank you, Jeff. That ends this episode of whatever this is. <laughs>